Ever since its debut, the charging speed of the 4680 equipped Model Y has been underwhelming. But has there been any improvement since those initial tests last year? And now with Tesla's next generation 4680 cyber cells, should we expect faster charging times from the Cybertruck that will be equipped with these next gen batteries versus the first gen 4680s? Stick around as I dive into some new 4680 charging data that was recently shared by Brandon Flash, compare it to previous tests, other Tesla vehicle charging speeds, and discuss my thoughts on what this all means when it comes to Cybertruck charging speeds. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Brandon Flash, who owns a standard range all-wheel drive Model Y that's equipped with 4680 batteries, recently shared the results of several um, 0 to 100% charge tests that were done at a Tesla V3 supercharger. In addition to a YouTube video that Brandon published, which shares the data for two of these charge tests. And I definitely recommend that you check out that video. I will link to it in the video description because Brandon dives into quite a bit of data that I believe is really important. But beyond that video, Brandon also shared three helpful charging curve charts on x.com and I'll link to that below as well. Here's the charging data that Brandon shared. First of all, starting with that YouTube video, um, which covered the details of two charging tests. Now, one of the charging tests that Brandon shared was done at night, and the second was done in the daytime. And you can see here in this chart, I've taken data from Brandon's YouTube video. And for that first night charging test, it took over 43 minutes to go from zero to 80%. For that second day test, it took over 44 minutes to go from zero to 80%. When it comes to the 10 to 80% charging time, it took approximately 41 minutes for both a day and nighttime test. And uh, so that's pretty consistent there. But when it comes to the zero to 100% charge test, you can see that the night test took over an hour and 25 minutes, but the day test took over an hour and 49 minutes, nearly one hour and 50 minutes to charge completely from zero to 100%. Those are obviously not very impressive charging times. And interestingly enough, these charging times are actually worse than the tests that I've talked about previously that were done last summer. In several of my past videos, I've referenced a charging test that was done by the Kilowatts in the summer of 2022, and also a charging test that was published on the Spoken Reviews YouTube channel back in summer of 2022. In the Kilowatts test, Ryan was able to go from 0 to 80% in around 32 minutes, and from 10% to 80% in around 30 minutes. For the test that was published on the Spoken Reviews YouTube channel, a 9 to 80% charge took around 34 minutes. I was expecting that the charging performance would get better with time and that Tesla was holding back a little bit. But apparently that was not the case. And once again, the charging performance has gotten worse um, as Brandon's tests show here. And Brandon was very clear in the YouTube video that was published that the Model Y, the battery pack was preconditioned. So the vehicle was set up properly and this was a fair test. Now, beyond the amount of time it took to charge the vehicle, I also find it very helpful to calculate the miles added per minute of charging. So if you compare the charging test that Brandon Flash recently did to the test that was published by the Kilowatts last summer, you can see that the miles added per minute of charging based on Brandon's test dropped below five, whereas with last year's test, it was over six. In addition, when you look at the long range all wheel drive Model Y, that vehicle can add somewhere over eight miles per minute of charging, which is substantially better than the 4680 equipped Model Y. Now, beyond the amount of time charging, I think it's important that as we talk through this, that we also look at charging curves because that gives us a really good idea of charging performance as well. Now, Tesla currently lists a 230 kilowatt charging max for the standard range all wheel drive Model Y as compared to 250 kilowatts for the long range and performance Model Y. However, when you take a look at the charging curves that Brandon shared on x.com, you can see that the standard range all wheel drive Model Y doesn't really take advantage of the V3 supercharger charging power potential and only sustains over 200 kilowatts for a very short period of time. As I mentioned previously, Brandon shared the charging data 
for two charging sessions on YouTube. But these charts shared on X.com are for three different tests, and the three charging curves do look pretty similar. With this first chart as an example, you can see that with this charging curve, at somewhere just a little bit over a 20% state of charge, the charging power had already dropped to around 100 kilowatts. For the second chart that Brandon shared, you can see that it sustained a little bit higher power rating um, for a little longer there, but still as the vehicle approached a 30% state of charge, it dropped to around 100 kilowatts or less. And here's a third charging curve chart. And in this particular test, the vehicle was able to get past, it looks like 30% before dropping to 100 kilowatts and below. Nonetheless, despite some small differences in these charts, this charging performance is not impressive. Brandon also followed up to that post with a great chart um, with data from Tesla Mate. And this is an aggregate charging curve of that vehicle. And you can see here that the charging curve is pretty consistent for this vehicle, um, basically in that same band. So this is a pretty common, good example of the charging curve of this vehicle. Now, earlier when I talked about miles being added per minute of charging, I used a 2170 equipped Model Y for comparison. I think it's important that we do a little comparison of this charging performance to the rest of Tesla's lineup to really put this in perspective. And I want to give a shout out and say thank you to at ghost and skater with two R's on X.com who published a great thread on this topic using data from Brandon Flash and also Bjorn Neeland's charging tests. And Ghost and Skater shared two really great charts comparing the charging performance for the Model 3, Model Y equipped with Panasonic batteries, uh, a Model 3 and Model Y equipped with LG batteries, a Model S and X with Panasonic 18650 batteries, and the Model Y with 4680 batteries. And you can see here that when you look at the charging curves of these various vehicles, the Panasonic battery cells, the 2170 and 18650 cells, definitely have the best charging performance here, as you can see. And the Model Y with 4680 batteries has the worst charging performance. Now, beyond that example, Ghost and Skater also shared this chart, which actually includes two different charts in one. And on the left, it shows voltage versus state of charge. And on the right, it compares C rate versus state of charge. If you look at the C rate side, once again, you can see that the Model 3 and Model Y equipped with 2170 batteries from Panasonic and the Model S and X equipped with 18650 cells from Panasonic, as you would expect, the C rate of those vehicles does outperform the other vehicles for most of the charging curve and the Model Y with 4680 batteries underperforms the rest of those vehicles in terms of C rate. In this thread on the topic of voltage, Ghost and Skater wrote, quote, the voltage curve is important to look because it can show us how much potential there is for improvement since high power at high voltages is one of the factors that can contribute to accelerated degradation. For example, both red and blue curves are cells that have silicon in the composition, which allows for faster charging. From that, we can speculate that the Model S and X packs have room for improvement, specifically on the 10% to 30% range, which aligns with the rumored power upgrade. Ghost and Skater went on, quote, for the 4680 V1 cells, we can see the voltage curve is way below even the LG packs, which aren't known for good charging performance, which might mean there is huge room for improvements. Both have no silicon in them. Why it's like that, we can only speculate. Maybe Tesla is being ultra conservative for now before getting more data, or maybe it's to not make it a good deal compared to the Model Y long range. Now, when it comes to the Cybertruck, that vehicle will include Tesla's second generation 4680 battery cells that are being called the Cyber Cells. But despite having a 10% boost in energy density, I still don't expect drastic improvements when it comes to charging speeds. In Tesla's Q2 2023 conference call, Drew confirmed that this 10% energy boost over the first generation 4680 batteries was achieved without integrating silicon, but rather was achieved, quote, through process and mechanical design optimization, which I have explained in past videos. 
So the basic chemistry of the next generation 4680 battery cells really shouldn't differ a lot from the first generation battery cells, but rather there's a little bit of a redesign of the battery cell itself, a little bit of a simplification of that. And specifically, one of the big changes was apparently um, a redesign of the battery cap itself, which is a lot lower in profile. And as you can see here in these images that are from a Tesla patent application, you can see the difference there from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, the first gen versus the second generation design. And the second generation design, once again, as I've mentioned previously, allows more room for the electrode, which helps increase the energy density of the battery. So once again, with no silicon in the anode of the new 4680 Cybercell, I don't expect the charging curve to look a lot different than the standard range all-wheel drive uh, first generation 4680 battery charging curve. Although the larger 120 plus kilowatt hour battery pack for the Cybertruck should help just a little bit, once again, the charging curve probably won't be all that impressive. So with all that being said, and with the underwhelming charging performance of the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, even if you connect the Cybertruck to a 350 kilowatt charger, which is where I expect Tesla's V4 superchargers to be based on information that has been released elsewhere and that I've talked about in previous videos, I don't expect that initially the Cybertruck will be able to take full advantage of that kind of power. So even connected to a 350 kilowatt charger, I think it'll still take around 45 minutes to charge the Cybertruck from a 10% to 80% state of charge. I hope that I'm wrong on this and that Tesla's redesign of the battery cap and some other changes to the battery that I don't know about, and maybe some changes to the actual pack itself and the way it cools. Maybe Tesla has made some big improvements that will uh, make this a lot better and that I'll be surprised. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't expect the Cybertruck to charge very quickly until later generations of Tesla's 4680 batteries and batteries specifically that have silicon in the anode. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.